Now, I know what everybody's going to say. Coach, you're going to get no views on this video? Don't even touch it. Sometimes you got to go impact over views. Some shit just got to be said. If you're down with it. The concept of super blacks and their relationship to reality brings controversy. Well, I'm not black. I'm OJ. Yes, folks. We're going there. In the year it was 1966. It's the history of black exploitation and HBCUs ended in 1976. This is a history that we gave ourselves, we accepted, and now it's come to fruition. There's two men on the screen right here. The yin and the yang. OJ and Walter Payton. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? One was put on a pedestal. One was forgotten about. Who has the records? Who has the bigger name? Hmm. The reason why this is it's prevalent is because the fact you go to one of these PWI schools and they should do what you want to do. As long as you follow the rules and do what they say, you can be what's called a giga nigga. You do whatever you want and it's cool with them. You present their expectation of your race. You tell your race how to behave. Calm down. Do as we say. And you set yourself up to be what's called a model minority. Sound familiar? The U.S. government has been pushing this model minority crap for decades. What did they do? After World War II, they felt kind of bad. So they used the Asian population of America as a model minority, seeing what black people should be. I'll let them tell you from the mouth of their own self. In the 1960s, government officials looked at socioeconomic data from African-American communities and contrasted it to the so-called family values and stability of Asian Americans. Now this fueled racist claims that black people had no one to blame but themselves if they experienced poverty and other social disadvantages. Conservatives went on to use these claims to justify making cuts to many essential social programs for African Americans and other disadvantaged minority groups. They were when it came down to it, it was really about money. We're sitting here crying for chains and pennies for the man that owns the bank. We're crying for crumbs of the bakery. The thing is, we're building that freaking bakery while the people in power are putting us against each other. Does that tell you how dumb that shit really is? I'll give you an example. Y'all know Alabama, right? Guess what this picture is? Brian Dennehy Stadium. Guess what day that is? Yeah, the day USC whooped that ass. What happened? The blood, the sweat, and tears of your grandparents took that stadium right there to whole new heights. And I mean whole new heights. The wealth of the African American community has been taken for years. If you're not willing to bend over and follow Massa, you're not going to get very far. That's just point blank, period. 
it's just how it is. Now, I know people are going to say, well, you got to confirm or conform to what the hiring status quo says, but no one else has to do that. You can't talk back as a black woman. You're going to be an angry black woman. You can't be a demanding black male they call you different kind of names. <laughs> they want the culture, not the person. One more again. They want your culture, not you. So, what does that mean, coach? What the hell are you even talking about? It's funny. Before 1966, black people couldn't make movies. But once you were turning down the black culture, they were getting financed left and right. HBCUs couldn't get any, and I mean any, coverage on TV. Talking down at them, get all you want. And before people go away, I'm going to give you some information right now. These are some facts. I know how we like facts, right? So I'm going to take this right here off and just going to go ahead and let the music play out. But the facts will remain. And I mean that. Nine of the top ten colleges that graduate the most African American students who go to earn PhDs are HBCUs. More than 50% of the nation's African American public school teachers and 70% of African American dentists and physicians earn degrees at HBCUs. Over half of all American professionals are graduate of HBCUs. In 2000, Xavier University in New Orleans individually produced more successful African American medical school applicants than John Hopkins, Harvard, and the University of Maryland combined. Spelman, Bennett College produced over half of the nation's African American women who go on to earn doctorates in all science fields, more than produced by the Ivy League's seven sisters combined. Hmm. HBCU significantly contribute to the creation of African American science degree holders of agriculture, 51.6%. Biology, 42.2%. Computer science, 35%. Physical science, 43%. And social science, 23.2%. HBCUs produce 44% of all. For the idiots in the back row. HBCUs produce 44% of all African American bachelor degrees awarded for communications technology. 33% of bachelor degrees awarded for engineering technology and 43% of bachelor degrees awarded for mathematics. There are 40 public four-year institutions around this country there are 48 four-year private schools around this country. Two, there are 11 two-year public institutions and four two-year private institutions of HBCU origin. Before 1966, HBCUs HBCUs had 80% of African-American 
attendance. After the year of 1976, that number was down to 19%. It's dipped as low as 9% in 2010. This is what we're fighting for. We're not worried about trash on the ground. We're worried about yourself, your community, teaching each other to love oneself and to keep striving for a better place. Now, I'm Coach Simmons. Like I said, I know this will get no views because people don't want to hear this. Has to be said. I'm out.